So we're going to discuss why does differentiation work? What is the meaning of this formula that you see in front of you? To do this, we're going to use the example of y is equal to x squared, and we're going to try and understand why the gradient of the tangent line to the curve at any point along this curve is given by 2x. So let's take a specific example. Let's take the point x is equal to 1. And of course, the value of the function x squared at x is equal to 1 is also equal to 1. And let's try now to work out what the gradient of the tangent line to the curve at this value x is equal to 1 is equal to. So it's not easy, but one of the things that we could do is we could try and create an approximation to the gradient of the tangent line. So what we could imagine doing is going forward by an amount 1 to the point x is equal to 2. And of course, the value of the function at x is equal to 2 is equal to 4, uh, 2 squared. And then what we can imagine doing is connecting a line between the point 1, 1 and the point 2, 4, this secant line here. And we could use that, the gradient of that as an approximation to the gradient of the red tangent line. So, how do we work out the gradient of this secant line? Well, that's easy. All we need to know is what is delta y and what is delta x. Well, delta x is quite clearly 1. Delta y is just 4. Take away 1, which is 3. So, 3 divided by 1 is equal to 3. So, the gradient of that secant line is equal to 3. And that's a reasonable approximation to the gradient of the tangent line in red. Let's now try to create a better approximation. So how can we do this? Well, we could make the change in x that we're going to make smaller. So what we could do is go forward, instead of going forward an amount 1, we could go forward by an amount a half. So we could go forward to the point 1 and a half, or 3 over 2. Now the value of the function at that point is uh, 1 and a half squared, which is 9 over 4, which is 2 and a quarter. And what we can again do is we can connect this point 1, 1 on the curve to the point 1 and a half, 2 and a quarter with a secant line like so. And we can ask what is the gradient of that secant line? And that gradient will be our approximation, our better approximation to the gradient of the tangent line here. So we just need to know what is delta x and what is delta y. Well, delta x we know because we chose it, it's going to be a half. And then we just need to know what is the change in y. So that's just going to be 2 and a quarter take away 1, which is 1 and a quarter or 5 over 4. So we then just take delta y, divide it by delta x, and we get a value of 2 and a half. So 2 and a half is a better approximation than 3 for the gradient of our tangent line. So that was the easy bit. Now we're going to step it up quite significantly. So now what we're going to do is rather than setting the change in x equal to a specific number like a half or equal to 1, we're going to imagine trying to create a formula for the gradient of the secant line for a general delta x. So we're going to let delta x equal a variable, we're going to let it equal a. So we're going to imagine going forward a general amount, which we're just calling a, so we're not specifying what it is, to a point 1 plus a, and then we want to say what is going to be the secant line, uh, the gradient of the secant line between the point 1, 1 and the point 1 plus a, 1 plus a squared. So what is the gradient of this general secant line? And why do we want to do this? Because if we can get a general formula, then we can imagine making a smaller and smaller and smaller and getting a better and better approximation. Now note, a cannot equal zero. The whole thing means nothing if you set a equal to zero. If you go forward by an amount zero, then you stay at the same point, and then the whole idea of taking the gradient of the secant line means absolutely nothing. But a can equal anything else. It could be a positive number, or it could be equal to a negative number. Of course, the picture refers to a being a positive number, but you could imagine setting a equal to a negative number, and then going backwards over here, and then creating a secant line, and finding the gradient of that secant line. So, all we now need to know is what is delta y and what is delta x? Well, delta x is equal to a. Delta y, then, is equal to, well, what's the value of the new point squared? Well, the new point is 1 plus a, so 1 plus a squared. Expand that, you get a squared plus 2a plus 1, so that's the y value up here. Delta y is going to be equal to that, take away 1, 
So the length of this side of the triangle is just a squared plus 2a. So delta y divided by delta x is a squared plus 2a, which is delta y divided by delta x. And as long as a does not equal 0, which we didn't ever intend a to equal anyway, because the whole thing means nothing if a is equal to 0, as long as a is not equal to 0, then you can do the algebraic cancellation, and you can cancel this down to a plus 2. So let's test our formula now for some specific values. So we've already done the case where a is equal to 1. So if you put a is equal to 1 into the formula, you obviously get the answer 3. So this is telling us that the gradient of the secant line that for you form when you go forward in amount 1 is equal to 3, which is the answer we got previously. When you put in a is equal to half, you get the answer 2.5, which is the answer we got previously. Let's just do a new example that we haven't actually done concretely. But if you put in a is equal to minus 1, obviously you would get out the answer that the gradient is equal to 1. And you can quite clearly see that that is going to be true. Because if you imagine going forwards by an amount minus 1, well that means going back i.e. from the point 1 to the point 0, and then finding out the gradient of this secant line here. Well, in that case, delta y is going to be negative 1 because you've gone down an amount 1, and delta x is also going to be equal to negative 1 because you've gone backwards by an amount 1. So negative 1 divided by negative 1 gives you overall the answer 1, which quite clearly is the gradient of that line that you can see there. Another complicated concept now. Let's take our formula a plus 2 for the gradient of the secant line for an arbitrary delta x a, and let's plot a graph of it. So let's plot the value of a versus the gradient that you obtain when you make that change in x a. Now that's reasonably simple because this is a very simple graph to plot. It's just going to be a straight line with vertical intercept equal to 2. Uh, so here we have it, straight line, gradient 1, intercept across the vertical axis of equal to 2. The one complicated thing to remember is that it's defined for all the other real numbers, this formula, but it's not defined when a is equal to 0. Remember, the whole basis of this meant nothing when a is equal to 0, and indeed you could not make the algebraic cancellation to get from here to here, when a was equal to 0. So you have to remember it's not defined for a is equal to 0, so there is actually a hole there at the value 0, 2. But for all the other real numbers arbitrarily close to 0, it is defined. Now, what we wanted to do, the whole reason we came up with this formula in the first place was so that we could form better and better approximations to the value of the tangent line at this point x is equal to 1. And we were going to do this by saying, well, if we make a smaller and smaller and smaller, what does this get closer and closer and closer to? Well, we can see what the answer is. The answer is quite clearly 2, the missing point from this um, straight line. As you get smaller and smaller, making a smaller and smaller, and uh, from either side, uh, either negatives or positives, the value that it's getting closer and closer to is 2. You can't evaluate this at a is equal to 0, so you can't just say a is equal to 0 and get out the answer to, because remember this whole thing means nothing when a is equal to 0, it's not defined for a is equal to 0. Instead, the concept that you need is the concept of a limit. What does this formula approach as a is equal to 0? So limit as a approaches 0 of a plus 2, and you can quite clearly see where it's going, it's equal to 2. And that is the value of the gradient of this red tangent line at x is equal to 1. It's equal to 2. So we've now found the gradient of the tangent line at x is equal to 1. We want to use the same approach that we've just done for the point x is equal to 1. And we now want to apply it for a general point, which we won't specify. So we'll just apply it for a general point x, so that we can now get a formula for the gradient of the tangent line for any point x uh, along the curve, and we're going to show that the answer that we get is the formula 2x. So let's do this. So we have our general point x. The value of the function there is, of course, x squared, and we want to know what is the gradient of the tangent line to the curve at that point. So we uh, want to create a formula 
for the gradient of the secant line for a general change in x equal to a. So we go forward an amount a to the point x plus a. And the value of the function at that point is obviously x plus a squared, which if you expand it gives x squared plus 2ax plus a squared. So we now want to find the gradient of this general secant line here. So we need to know what is delta y. Well, that's going to be equal to the value of y here. Take away the value of y here. So x squared plus 2ax plus a squared. Take away x squared, which gives us 2ax plus a squared. So that is the change in y. We then want to divide that by the change in x, which is equal to a. So we want to divide it by a. And provided a is not equal to zero, you can make an algebraic cancellation here and you get this general formula which is that it's equal to 2x plus a. So it's a general point x, the formula for the gradient of a secant line for a general a is given by 2 times the value of x that you've chosen. So in our concrete example before, x was just equal to 1, hence why this formula turned into 2 plus a. But now for a general x, it's going to be 2x plus a. Now, we can't just say what is the value of this when a is equal to 0 because of this. It meant nothing to do this when a was equal to 0. You could not make the algebraic cancellation that we made here when a was equal to 0. But what you can imagine doing is saying what does this formula get closer and closer and closer to as a approaches 0, which is what we mean by the limit as a approaches 0. So in terms of the picture, this you can imagine making a smaller and smaller and smaller and this point gets closer and closer and closer down the curve to our point here and then that little secant line that you're forming between this point and this point, x plus a, is getting closer and closer to being the gradient of the tangent line and that's why this process of taking the limit works to find the gradient of the tangent line. Now you can quite see, clearly see what is going to happen here. As you make a smaller and smaller and smaller, as you can imagine taking it from 1 to 0.5 to a quarter to an eighth to a sixteenth, etc., making it smaller, it just gets closer and closer to zero. So the thing that it's approaching is just equal to 2x. And that is why this formula 2x gives the gradient of the tangent line to the curve x squared for any point x. You just input the value of x that you're interested in. So if you wanted 1, you just input 1 here and you get the gradient of the tangent line is equal to 2. If you're interested in minus 1, you just put minus 1 in here and you get the gradient of the tangent line is equal to minus 2. So we have now shown why the derivative of x squared is equal to 2x, the logical basis behind it. That logical basis is the same Thing that you apply for all other functions that you want to differentiate. It may be more complicated to actually compute what the derivative is going to be, but the logic behind it is the same. Uh, so let's finish the video by applying it for a general function f of x now. So if we've, we've got in white here our general function f of x, if we want to find the derivative of this function, i.e. a formula for the gradient of the tangent line to this curve at any point x, what we do is we go to a general point x, the value of the function is equal to f of x there, and again we imagine finding the gradient or finding a formula for the gradient of secant lines and taking the limit of that formula. So we imagine going forward an amount a to the point x plus a, the value of the function there is f at x plus a, here is the secant line. We want to find the gradient of that secant line. So it's going to be delta y, which is going to be equal to this y value, which is f of x plus a. Take away this y value, which is f of x. So this change here is f of x plus a minus f of x. And we then want to divide that by a. So this formula inside here is the formula for the gradient of a general secant line for a change delta x is equal to a. We then, we can't say what is this equal to when a is equal to zero because it doesn't mean anything. We'd be dividing by zero, which isn't algebraically allowed. Um, and it 
doesn't mean anything. The secant line doesn't exist when a is equal to zero. So instead, what we say is as a gets smaller and smaller and smaller, imagine bringing this point closer and closer and closer and closer to our point of interest. What does this, the value of this formula approach? What is the limit of it? And that's the value that we're going to be interested in. And that is what this formula means. And that is the logical basis for differentiation, finding the gradient of the tangent line to curves. Thank you for watching.